There are hundreds of design blogs. Each reflects the personality and expertise of its founders. I started Daniel on Design as a design historian, and therefore it always discusses what happened in the past. And this concentration on history is what gives my blog its own identity. It connects the vintage with the contemporary, the old with the new, the archival with the original. And I'm therefore drawn particularly to designers who have that interest in history. Brian McCarthy is one of them. Brian McCarthy belongs to a small group of prolific American decorators who started their careers at the legendary office of Parrish Hadley. It was this office that came to set the standard for American style in interior decor from the 60s through the 80s, creating homes for some of America's most legendary families. Brian's training in traditional luxurious interior decor has come to shape his own signature interiors. How are you? Good. Welcome. Come on in. It's so great being here. Is this a new chandelier? Patrice Dongel just arrived a few months ago. At first your call seemed innocent to friends and nothing more. You are a true lover of the arts and the art is really what this shapes your interiors. And when did this start? It started when I was a kid, but the art has kind of grown over the years with me because it really brings the lifeblood and the heart and soul into the projects that I do. How do you convince a client to that uh, this object is a white object for their interiors? Start to show things to them, not with the idea that they have to buy it, but just so their eye begins to see different combinations of things, they can begin to understand and see differences because it's those differences for me that when I really want to push and, and have conviction about something, I can explain why. Let me show you one of my favorite things, Daniela, which is this wonderful sort of chair, but it's, it's based on the crown of thorns. It's by Michelle O'Cadona. It's Michelle O'Cadona, like a piece of jewelry. And um, she does it in a larger size too, which I'm nuts for, but uh, she's so talented. We're working with her on a new commission right now. I've worked with her in the past, and uh, I think she's such a visionary. You travel all over the world and you know, and you always love to discover these, these small atelier of artisans and artists. Any of these that you prefer, that you want to acknowledge? Claude Lalande, who I've been working with for a long time now, so I'll, we can come back to that. But there, there are certainly other, um, and even some younger artists that, that I really enjoy working with. The story behind this is Claude Lalanne and her husband who has since died, Francois, are two artists that I have just loved for the last 25 years. This was commissioned um, with Claude uh, three years ago and um, the only directive I gave was, well, size, obviously. And I didn't want too many birds because I find sometimes they're a little too heavy. So I was more interested in the butterflies than I was in the birds. I saw it when it was in process because she puts the pieces together and she lays it all out. I mean, and that's also what I love is that something like this, it's her hand on every part of it. What can I tell about you by looking at this apartment? The evolution of this apartment has really not been about a particular piece for a particular place. It's really been buying things that we love and then they find their place.
Campana Brothers? Yeah, one of my favorites, um, Fernando and Umberto Campana, they did this whole Baroque series several years ago. And, uh, and then with the fur, and I, I love the kind of craziness of it. They're so talented and it's so tactile. Real collector is always going to be moving things around, and so that's been a lot of the fun in this apartment, you know, where a painting comes in, and at the moment it's sort of the major piece in the apartment, but suddenly that piece is now hanging in a hallway, or, and that's a joy, and every time you move things around, too, it changes the whole atmosphere, it changes the whole experience. Mel Buckner. Yeah, an American artist um, whose work we love. And he works um, with these phrases, and in this particular piece, it's all based on language from the 1920s. Um, but for me, just compositionally, graphically, and color, uh, you know, it's a real departure from all of the abstract and expressionist work that we have. So I love it for a lot of reasons, but um, I think it's such an interesting contrast to the rest of the collection. It's never that you say, okay, I'm done. In Paris one day, I stumbled upon this desk by Buffa, and it was just like that. I, you know, I, it, for me, it was just magic, and I knew that it was going to have the lightness, it was going to have a more modern quality to it. Um, you know, this started to shift the room. Just this one change started to shift the room, and it's, you know, it's moments like that that change the way you see things and allow you to take a step forward. They should carry the objects with them throughout their lives. All of this, they're like children for me. I can't think of anything here that I wouldn't want to live with them. <laughs> it looks like. Mm -hmm.